guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Gallery Girls, episode two. It's only one season, so it's episode two of eight episodes. You can, I bought mine from Amazon, um, the streaming part, you can, or Amazon Instant, whatever they call it. I think it was, I don't know, like 12 bucks. But uh, you can also, I believe, find this for free on YouTube. If you search Gallery Girls, you might be able to find it. So in case you want to watch it along with me, let's get into it. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering scary island like the greatest season of real housewives in new york so check it out thanks so much so watch my first episode for a breakdown of who each of these girls are but here's a quick reminder because it's hard for me to keep them straight too we got amy she's the daddy's girl dad's paying for everything she lives on the upper east side we got maggie maggie holds her head weird and she's very full of herself she has a trust fund Carrie is a hard worker, and there's Liz, whose dad is an art collector. He collects Warhols. Chantal is a one-third of the owner of End of Century. Angela is the model slash hope-to-be gallery owner, and Claudia is also a third of End of Century. They don't show Lauren. She's the other one. And that's it for the girls. So this episode, we pick up where the last one left off with that end of century party where they stayed up so late. They had a bunch of people over. They had a huge party to open the gallery. Well, this poor girl, Claudia, I feel so bad for her. She comes in early. She's cleaning up. Nobody's there to help her. And she's kind of getting a reality check like, oh, hey, I don't know Chantal very well, but we went into business together. Hmm. Wonder if this was a good idea. So Chantal showing up at 1230 with her boyfriend. And can you believe this? When Chantal gets there, you know what she says? Yeah, uh, we should probably come up with a schedule because I'm going to have to go soon. She tells the camera, I had a good night's sleep. I did some yoga and a French press. Now I'm ready for work. Wow. So Claudia is saying, I don't know if Chantal sees this as a business or more of a pet project. Chantal's in her own little world, and I kind of love that about her. Poor Claudia is going to have an aneurysm because her family put in $15,000. Chantal thinks she's an equal partner because her aunt contributed $2,500. Don't know what Lauren put in. Okay, so we're over at Maggie's apartment. Again, Maggie, she's very strange. She holds herself in such a cocky way. It kind of blows my mind a little bit. She holds her head to the side in every interview, and all I can think of is... The latest season of Below Deck Med, if you watch that, Jessica did this. It's a fir her first day back at Eli's gallery. She has to finish up an internship so she can move on. There's so much tension in the past, but if there's tension because she <laughs> left it. She just took three weeks off, and it sounds like she didn't really tell anybody. We go over to this cafe. It's Carrie. Carrie's actually one that gives a crap. She's working full-time at this lifestyle management company, she says she takes care of wealthy people, social lives, travel, dinner reservations, etc. She can't afford to lose this job, but she wants to take on this internship that she's just gotten where she's working with Amy. Uh, they work for Sharon, who helps buy art for rich people. So he's talking about, um, her boss actually seemed really nice. He's like, it can work. Just keep working hard. We're going to send you to that at art Basil in Miami in December. He wants her to focus on that and has to spend time focused on um, just getting everything done. So that way she can do both. So then we're at Eli Klein Art Gallery. Now I'll remind you, this is Eli and Liz is interning. And remember Liz last episode explained her dad is a huge collector of everything from Picasso to Warhol and everybody in between and just very wealthy. And Eli knows this. So if she gets mad, she tells her dad Eli's in trouble. And then Maggie shows up. She says it took six months to work up to the front desk, but Liz is sitting there and she just started. Eli comes up with these weird menial tasks for, including filling the dog water bowl. 
And Liz says, it's Maggie's first day. Since I've been here, he's treating her like a servant. And I'm thinking, it's probably because he's scared of your dad. So he's going to make her do all the menial work. But uh, <laughs> he has her sorting through dog poop bags and folding these bags so they can be used as dog poop bags. Liz says, this girl has a degree in her art history, but he's making her fold dog poop bags. He obviously has an issue with her. Then we go over to the bar. We got Angela, Laura, Chantal, and Claudia. And they're talking. They're out on the prowl. And <laughs> it's so weird. So they're asking if there's any lookers there. They're looking around to see about single men. And these guys come up. And they are so disgusting. One of them eats their food. They just He just walks up and grabs a handful of their food. Chantal has the best line here. She says, I always get offended when unattractive men hit on me. So this disgusting guy who put his hands in their food, uh, Laura's telling him, listen, don't come talk to us after doing that. And he, he says, well, it's Asian month and I'm looking to, and then he trails off. Laura gets up and walks off. The guy puts his hand and the rest of their food, and then walks off. Well, Angela gets really pissed and throws the whole bowl of chips at him. Then we're over at Amy's apartment. It's on the Upper East Side. Remember, Dad pays for everything. So she volunteers a lot, and she has an art history degree. She's worked at art galleries. So they're all getting ready to go to this art auction. Carrie's invited because she's now working with Amy. We see Maggie and her boyfriend's friend Eric. They're all, Chantal, they're all getting ready to go to this auction. It's a big deal. Uh, Innocent century girls want to be there just to see what's going on and try to figure out how to get customers to their, to their place. So the Innocent century girls get there and Maggie's judging them very harshly and just kind of being weird and snotty. She's doing this in the interview, which I still don't get. It's the first lot they're going to bid, and we have Sharon, the boss of Amy, um, and she's going to bid on this first lot. So the first lot ends up being bid on for $11,000. That's where it starts out. It's Damien Hurst. So she ends up winning the bid, Sharon does, for $16,000. Chantal says it's super exciting to see pictures in real life and seeing people bid on them. The guy with Maggie's being a dick he tells Claudia that her shirt's on backwards. So she's kind of freaking out after that. And it's awkward. And they're snickering. It's just, ugh, they're all snobs. So Amy starts ass kissing again and tells the girls that she really wants to come by and see End of Century if that's okay. Chantal, Chantal says, I'm not used to people being so friendly. Uh, Amy then starts talking about meeting a nice guy at the comedy club last night. And they talked and talked. Yeah, it ended up being the guy, that jerk that was sitting with Maggie. Maggie then says, I don't think Amy knows that I know the whole story. She was trying to hook up with him and was completely drunk. Then Maggie says, hey, Chantal, I like your haircut. To camera, she says, I mean, I don't really like it, but the art world is so small. Sometimes you have to say stuff. So the group goes to Opia Restaurant in Midtown. Amy orders a lychee martini. Angela says, um, that was popular like five years ago. Chantal orders a Pinot Noir, but says only if it's from France. She doesn't like it from Oregon. Carrie to camera says, Chantal is like the Mary Kate and Ashley, but a dark goth version, which is totally what I, I think I said that last episode. She's like an Olsen twin. Amy and Carrie talk about how great Sharon is. Amy to camera then says, I'm still trying to figure out how Carrie got this internship if she has no experience. Then Carrie's boyfriend Hernando shows up and Carrie's going to leave for a concert. Amy invites Carrie out tomorrow night. Carrie says, I don't know if I can deal with the Upper East Side. Amy says, so sue me. I dress well. Sucks for you. And then Carrie ends up leaving. She left without paying her bill. She didn't pay for anything. <laughs> no drinks, no nothing. And so they're all like, what the hell? So they end up having to cover her and everybody's broke. So they're all pretty pissed about it.
So it's the next day we see Carrie working for her luxury concierge company. He asked her to bring bagels for these clients that will be at Teterboro Airport. So she has to pick them up and bring them to the pilot on the, air, on the private plane. Then Sharon asks her to pick up a print from a framer. So she's going to have to handle that too, as well as taking care of this task. So we see her go lay out the bagels on the private plane. Then we see her go over to the framer and get the art for Sharon. Meanwhile, back at Eli Klein, Liz arrives. And Maggie's there and says she has to go to Brooklyn. The Eli needs her to pick up badges for an art event. And Maggie's pissed because she's like, hello, isn't this what messengers are for? She keeps complaining about Brooklyn. She keeps saying she hates it. Why would anybody choose to live there? There's broken glass. Somebody whistles at her. She keeps saying, I hope I don't die. She's just so pissed off. So we hear about this the whole time. She finally gets the badges. She gets in the back of a cab and she's basically like, fuck this. She calls her boyfriend and she leaves him a voicemail about how ridiculous this whole thing was. Meanwhile, my favorite store, End of Century. Oh, this place is such a train wreck. So Claudia is having a heart attack because, again, she's invested all this money. Laura, not so much. Um, website's looking good. They finally got it working. So St Stefan is a Lower East Side gallery owner stopping by with some French clients. So she's holding out hopes that they will buy something. They have some pieces on the wall they range from about 6400 7500 things like that. So it's a commercial storefront, and she's explained that it's hard to sell a piece of art. A lot has to do with educating people about the art versus the jewelry and the clothes. People just come in and look at those and buy those. Um, so they're interested in the jewelry and the hat, but they didn't really buy anything. So it was weird because they were just like, oh, uh, we're having an opening on Thursday. So I don't know if that was edited afterwards or what, but it, they didn't, I don't, I just didn't feel like Claudia was pushing that sell, sale very hard. Maggie returns back to Eli's gallery. Eli's looking for an assistant. Maggie said she was his personal assistant for like a day and it was all running errands. Hello, Maggie. What do you think you're supposed to do as an assistant? Um, Liz says, I like Maggie. We get along. I'm seeing what she puts up f with from Eli. What's the deal with that? She doesn't understand it at all. We see Chantal go to get her hair cut. She says, Laura and Claudia have the long brown hair thing going on, so I want to chop it all off. Spencer likes my hair like this, but I don't consult him in these kind of decisions. Um, so she gets her hair cut and everything she does, I don't know, Chantal just fascinates me in the weirdest way. So she got, she got her hair cut and she says she looks so pretty. And, and she does, she has an interesting face, but ooh, she knows it. Meanwhile, we're at Carrie's grandparents. It's hard to care really about this. She has a nice family. They live on Long Island. Things have been hectic. She wanted to see the family. Jacqueline, her sister, says Carrie's apartment is beautiful, like out of a magazine. Um, Dad's football is obsessed, so they end up going to a pub. They talk about how she's living and how much everything costs. And She says the scariest thought is having to move from the West Village back to Long Island. Meanwhile, back at End of Century, they're having another train wreck meeting. Laura, Chantel, and Claudia. Chantel's saying, I feel like we've made sales. Like, we're we're half of what we need? Claudia's like, uh, no, we need to make $7,400 a month. And right now we're at $2,500 for the month. And they say, well, let's hope that we sell a painting. Chantal says, we've sold quite a bit of clothes, but uh, so far not a single piece of art. I do hold Claudia responsible for selling artwork. Claudia says, we don't have any more investors' money and by investors' money, I mean the money my parents gave us that we're expected to pay back. We have no income. Chantal says, of course I'd love to sell a painting, but they're like six grand a painting. Oh my God, isn't this stuff that you guys talk about before going into business together? You stress me out. This is crazy. <sighs> so they open this bill and it's... Oh, gosh, it's like $83 electric bill, which I thought was pretty good for a New York store. But um, 
So they're freaking out about how to pay that. And by that, I mean, Audi is freaking out. Laura and Chantal just think it comes from the sky and it'll be just fine. Then we see Angela out to dinner with her friends. She says she needed to go out with her gays to discuss her plans. She's sick of the guys in Brooklyn. Everyone's broke and has an STD. She wants someone reliable. She explains that her dad cheated on her mom. And she wants someone interested in a long-term relationship. She wants a British accent or an Australian accent. That's very specific. And calls herself picky. She said she's a good catch. She doesn't know why she doesn't have guys falling all over asking me out all the time. So we're back at Eli Klein. It's Liz and Maggie. Maggie can't wait to get her letter from Eli and just move on. Or so she says. She's afraid she's going to get screwed over. And then he'll say she didn't complete her internship. This makes no sense to me. Liz says there's got to be more of the story of Eli and Maggie than I'm being told. Eli asks Liz and Maggie out for drinks afterward. Liz says she can't go because she's getting her hair done. Well, she ends up telling us, I'm not getting my hair done. I just want to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> and she, then Liz says he's trying to hit that with Maggie. So Maggie and Eli are at drinks. And it is. It's really incredibly awkward. But it's not just him. She's awkward too. He's trying to buy her food and drinks. And they seem kind of weirdly into each other. It's some weird game they have going on. He's buying her drinks and food, and she seems into it. Liz, in a voiceover, says, I think they're in love with each other. Maybe they'll get married and have midget babies with back hair. The thought of them having sex makes me want to vomit. And there's weird tension there. <laughs> and that's how the episode ends. So then we get a preview of next episode. It's Amy very drunk versus Maggie in a bathroom. It's Chantal versus Claudia, and they're arguing about how to hang art in the end of century. More weird sexual tension between Maggie and Eli. And something's going on with Liz's very rich father, so I can't wait to see it. So much good stuff here, you guys. Such a fun show, such a fun show to watch and recap. I just really enjoy talking about this one. It's so silly and light and... The girls on here make me want to bang my head against the wall, but it's kind of fun too. So I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my other shows. I have all kinds of stuff up from Gilmore Girls to Emily in Paris to anything on Bravo. Check them all out. Leave me comments below. I love the comments. I read them all. Leave me, um, you can t tweet me at Real Recaps. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Tell your friends about me I'm trying to grow. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.